1077 The Bone. That is brand new from the Foo Fighters. That song is called Rope. Foo Fighters next month at the Oracle Arena in Oakland. Tickets on sale now. And in the studio with me, Chris Burns, who's going to be performing with Sarah Colonna at the Punchline in San Francisco Thursday through Saturday. I have a pair of tickets to give away to the Friday Late Show. Those tickets are on sale now at LiveNation.com. And, um, dude, Chris. Yes, ma'am. You're, you're, on, you're going to be on TV? <laughs> well, I was on TV. You, you were already on TV? Yeah. On, uh, oh, so you were on the season that already aired. Right. Okay, tell everybody about the show because I am floored. I only heard that I had to watch the show and I missed the whole first season. So I was on uh, Shameless, which is on Showtime. And it's an adaptation of the British show. And it's about this uh, dysfunctional, uh, tortured family, uh, working class. I think in Britain it was like... Was it like the next generation of Absolutely <laughs> Fabulous or something? <laughs> something like, it's like their version of Trailer Park. I don't know what they, they call it, the Manchester Flat, something. It's they had a fancy. Oh, is it like the the English version of the Canadian show Trailer Park Boys? Uh, Trailer so Park it's Boys? Like, <laughs> it's like the English version of like the projects, you know. Like That would be awesome <laughs> if you were on the American version of an English show that was the English version of a Canadian show that was the <laughs> adaptation of a stage play. <laughs> With like a faux British accent that like I'd lapse in and out of. Yeah. <laughs> so awesome. So Shameless is about like a wasteoid alcoholic patriarch. Yeah. So William H. Macy plays the the alcoholic dad. And I think the first few episodes of season one, he's just like on the floor out. And then, uh, yeah, it's just about like this family of kids who they're all just dysfunctional and they're trying to make it. And, you know, it's kind of it's kind of like it's a, a feel dark good show. <laughs> kind of like a dark comp. There's like it's it's like a drama with some pockets of like gallows humor. Which, awesome. I, which I really like. So All I know is people kept telling me I had to watch it. And I was like, I can't find it. Where is it? They're like, it's on Showtime. <laughs> and I'm flipping through the Showtime schedule. No one schedule. has Showtime. You had to I order have it. Showtime because I love weeds. My, f- my mom. Weeds Hi, the mama. TV show, not actual weed. Oh. <laughs> not that I, yeah, I, I, not that I don't like weed. I just don't love weed. I've never seen but that. But I love weed. I was like, I don't have any. Some of these shows. Honestly, like, no first desire. three seasons are the way to go. The first three? Yeah. It gets yeah. a little odd, but once, but after you see it's, <laughs> once you've gotten through the first three seasons, you're invested, you're hooked, you can't <laughs> leave it, even though there are bad I episodes. I feel that way about True Blood. I'm obsessed <gasps> with True Blood. Me and my I sister Erin. Did Blood. so last night. Were you like flipping? Yes. yes. Yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> I totally lost my. They bananas had to last kill. Night. A, I'm sorry. Like. Uh, Oh, yeah. Should we spoiler alert? (laughs) Spoiler alert. If you have not seen the season finale of True Blood, uh, come back to us in 90 seconds because we're going to talk about it right now. Oh, my God. It was amazing. (gasps) So, yeah, I don't know how many more supernatural things they can add on that show. I think we've got it covered, right? I, th- I don't think From they werewolves should. To witches. To like part of me doesn't think that they should add more supernaturals, but then part of me is like, well, what if else you, can we do? If you're going along the premise of right. supernaturals existing, and you've already gotten the vampires, the werewolves, the fairies, the shift shapeshifters, then you kind of to be within your ads. premise, the main ads, <laughs> you have to a- acknowledge that everything exists. Right. So since they've already kind of set the premise that everything exists. It's actually kind of funny the way they keep introducing new things. I mean, this season it was all about witches and, you know, and last season the new species was fairies and werewolves. And so next season, honestly, I think they are going to have to bring in a new species, especially since they're killing people off. I mean, spoiler alert. (laughs) Hey Zeus! <laughs> what? What? No! No! He was my favorite. He was so nice. I love it. And creepy Renee and Gran coming back, like yeah. the whole first season people coming back around. I'm sorry, I was. Yeah, obs- Gran was a little toe up. Gran was she a little like. She did. She was like sucky. You know, she didn't really stay around. I was kind of like, wow. That- and I, I know guess you weren't as close as you thought, Sucky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Gran's a little irritated with you. <laughs> Maybe she thinks you've gotten a little slutty. Oh, and I would just like to point this out. Remember how Suki in the beginning wouldn't even say dang? Yeah. And I now know. she's like, I'm an effing fairy? How lame is that? You know, and you're just like, wow. Suki gun got turned out. Suki got potty mouth and slutty like <laughs> overnight. So no wonder Gran didn't want to hang out See, with this her. This is why I don't read I don't read any of the books for these things because people oh. the book readers have been. I didn't read the books either. That's just ridiculous. You know, they they tend to be purists, like people who read the Harry Potter and then. All they yeah. do is complain when the movies come out. Like, you know what? I totally <laughs> got over that because I used to read all the Stephen King books when I was in junior high. <laughs> junior high and high school, I read everything that Stephen King ever them. made. A, I like him as a writer. Yeah. And I then I went and I watched say. every movie after I read every book and I was just like, huh? Was like it, that movie Silver Bullet? 
nothing like the 20 Carrie? page short story. Carrie, I thought was the most true to it. There was more. Carrie was frighteningly true to it. Like honestly. There was more detail there that was more too frightening. I don't know how you could have put that on TV. But. I was surprised that they included as much as they did in the movie Carrie <laughs> because <laughs> that book sense, was twisted. Pig's blood oh. That's gotta be. Oh. And you know what? I think to this day, I don't think a butcher will sell you that much pig's blood. <laughs> Honestly, I think he might be worried. Like, wait a minute, it's prom time. It's like spray paint and graffiti. Right. There's like a there's like an an unspoken restriction. <laughs> you are not allowed to buy more than you need to make blood sausage. Exactly. It's I don't like, care how bad your family is. Yeah. I think I think you get like one gallon max. Yeah. That's it. It's not enough. You need See, like at least a five gallon bucket to have a carry experience. That's the good that the movie's done. Is yes. that it's cut back on pig's bloods at prom. Honestly, I think they should start showing it in schools now as an anti-bullying effort. Ex- exactly. The it gets better people need this to have sissy space to do what is carry. Oh my god, that's <laughs> okay. It's not. Yeah, gonna all I gotta do is uh, teach my nephew uh, telekinesis, and he can tell him what time it is. That would be Lock awesome. Gym doors. Nobody wants to be it's bullied. Down. Yeah, see, and it, it, it honestly, it is the uh, the ultimate anti-bullying message. You know, <laughs> don't bully that quiet little girl because she may be telekinetic and she will f She might you be locked up. in the closet by her crazy religious mom and like have some like dun uh, dun dun superpowers. <laughs> My only superpowers are sleeping till noon and eating a whole box of raisin bran. You can eat a whole box of raisin bran in like a day. I'm not going to go into the experience <laughs> that I could not survive. It that's, takes a day. You, no, that is a super, that's like a super challenge. Listen, okay, listen, you you have the raisin bran, you pour it in, you eat it, and there's like a little milk left. So you're like, oh, let me top that off. And then you put a little more cereal and just that just gets out of hand. And then by the end of the day. What's it like the next done. day? The next day is <laughs> <sad>. <laughs> It's like, oh, I have got, oh. I Chris Burns. Raisin. Promises not to eat Raisin Bran the day before she performs with Sarah Colonna at the punchline. <laughs> She's going to be there on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday this week. Um, so, you know, just... just Come on down! Splice it in with some Cap'n Crunch. So <laughs> Cap'n Crunch, no, I can only have a bowl of that. A little stop and a little go. It's top roof it's, of your mouth. I it think totally they does. They did. That's it's cool. to slow kids down because otherwise they'll eat the whole box. It's to slow kids down. That's, <laughs> that's the cereal speed bump is the Cap'n Crunch. <laughs> <laughs> tears up the roof of your mouth. Tickets That's for all the shows so are on sale now at LiveNation.com, and I got a pair for you right now at 888-303-BONE. 1077 The Bone in the Twilight Zone. That is Golden Earring. I'm Nikki Black, and in the studio with me, I have Chris Burns, who's going to be performing with Sarah Colonna at the Punchline in San Francisco. I have tickets to the Friday night show, but they're going to be there Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Those tickets are on sale now at LiveNation.com. And um, Chris, what is something you could tell me about Sarah Colonna? Because I have never heard of her, and I'm curious. I know the punchline gets great talent, but a lot of times people don't know that they want to go see a show because they don't recognize a comedian without seeing them. Um, she drinks. All right. She's already <laughs> after my heart. <laughs> um, I, guess I like she, a woman who drinks. <laughs> she's one of the the panel regulars on Chelsea Lately. So if you tune into that Does, show, you she doesn't drink apple teenies, right? <laughs> that's that's where that I draw the line. I there. think they do all do like they make their own like martinis and stuff on the show. That's what I've heard, at least. That's one of the Ooh. rumors. But I think if you've turned in, I mean, most everybody's like kind of flipped past that show. She's you've probably seen her on there. And uh, I'm sure she likes puppies. Well, if you yeah. don't like puppies, I don't want to know you. I- <laughs> puppies and Star Wars. I heard, like, yeah. if you don't like puppies and Star, Star Wars, Wars, you are not my friend. Oh, my God. Colby would love you. My seven-year-old nephew. He's obsessed <laughs> with Star Wars. Yeah. He's Too bad I'm knight. taking Kobe because I am perfect for a seven-year-old. <laughs> 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 he, awesome. li- he likes blondes <laughs> oh so i'm totally out of the running well then kobe suddenly i'm not so perfect for your seven-year-old ass he's probably still awake and he's all mom why'd she say that mom she's saying inappropriate things <laughs> she used a bad word i'll go put a quarter in the swear jar sorry <laughs> she used to babysit nikki used to babysit you i did stories about babysitting. there are children that i babysat <laughs> <laughs> can you believe that actually my sisters you one of these days I'll bring my sisters in here and they will tell you stories of things that I probably don't remember from having babysat them that just, you know, probably <laughs> warped their little lives forever. <laughs> Crazy time. I know we were all so close in age. It's like the horror stories everybody remembers. Yeah. I think my parents left. They came back. My sister had a bloody lip. 
My brother had a black eye. Somebody got thrown out of the stairs. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> this is see? when I was in charge. <laughs> and here is the lesson, ladies and gentlemen. You don't want either of us watching your children. However, no. you do want to sit around, have a couple of drinks, and watch us say funny things. <laughs> so you are going to see Chris Burns with Sarah Colonna at the Punchline on Friday, September 16th at 10 o'clock. If you give me a call right now at 888-303-BONE. 1077 The Bone, that is Nickelback and How You Remind Me. I'm Nikki Black reminding you that Chris Burns is in the studio with me and performing with Sarah Colonna at the Punchline in San Francisco Mm -hmm. this Thursday through Saturday. Tickets are on sale now at LiveNation.com and you can enter to win them on the comedy page at 1077thebone.com. And um, while we were here, you did something that I thought was odd. Um, You read my angel cards. Yes, I did. And I was like, what are angel cards? And you, they're, they're basically like tarot cards, but not quite. They're guidance from the angels. It has to be whispered when you say guidance from the angels. Guidance from the angels. <laughs> so, but yeah, tarot cards are different. But um, tele- is that is that fr- is that from the secret line of stuff? No, I think some some chick who what's her Doreen Virtue. She's Doreen Virtue PhD. I'm not sure what her PhD's in. <laughs> Probably reading nutrition. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm a dietitian by day and angel card reader by night. But so, how did you feel, Nikki, when you got your reading? Um, I, I am conflicted with my angel card reading because mm-hmm. it uh, it did seem to express an awful lot of freedom in my future. And there are certain things like my job that I would like to be anchored to. <laughs> <laughs> so as long as that freedom is like an existential freedom, I'm all about it. So you're an atheist, right? You don't believe you don't believe in angels. That is true. Well, I don't believe in I don't believe that angels come from God. I believe in ghosts. Well, did it can did angels it, be ghosts? Yeah, have you seen a ghost? I have witnessed an inexplicable action. Really? That I could contri- that I could attribute to a ghost. Like yes. something flying off or Yes. Really? Yes. Uh working downstairs at the Warfield Theater uh-huh. um in the basement and there was a f- uh, framed photograph, a very large framed photograph that contained uh the original staff of the Fillmore in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Cuz Bill Graham presents uh Bill Graham worked both buildings and we had this photo propped up on a fake fireplace and it was leaning against the back wall and on three separate occasions I watched it come up off the wall and fall on somebody Seriously? and I never saw it come up off the wall and fall unless there was a person there for it to to hit and one time it happened in such slow motion that I was so used to it happening that I caught it before it hit the person And I was like, ha-ha, ghost, take that. (laughs) There's no draft or anything? No. No, it's in the basement. There's nothing. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. It was like an underground basement building. It was neat. One time I came home, I had come home, and it was late, and uh, I was down in my room, and I felt like someone was there. And I was like, usually if I feel ghosts around, I'm like, get out. I don't want to talk to you. I had to sleep with my light on. And this happened for two nights, and um, I was living with my parents, and the third night I come home late and I, cause the first two nights I didn't mention it to anybody. I didn't even see my parents. So the third night I come home, my mom comes running down the stairs. She goes, Chrissy, you need to sleep upstairs. And I'm like, why? And she goes, there has been this, there's this male entity has been walking up and down the stairs. He's looking for you. <laughs> and I was like, why were you talking about? Like you said, you're crazy. And I hadn't said anything to her about the past two nights. I couldn't sleep. She goes, no, there's someone who's looking for you. Like he wants to talk. I don't know what his deal is. And uh, you need to go sleep upstairs. I'm like, well, who's to say he's not going to mess with me there? Yeah. And she's Maybe like, she, he's she... not going to go past my energy. So I ran down to my room <laughs> and grabbed my blanket. And apparently her energy protected me. And then I didn't feel that. I for... thought you meant she was sending you to him to like resolve it. Go <laughs> tell, You go talk to your friend. Go talk to that boy and get him out of my house. Get I that am... ghost out of my out. house. No, she was just like, no, he's not going to go past my energy. I put up a block here. She's kind of a. Did she like drop some salt or something? She, uh, yeah, sure. Because let's face it, I feel completely educated in the ways of all things wicked now that I've watched True Blood. Yes. (laughs) She didn't have any salt, but my mom has a powerful, she's powerful witch energy. She had like sage and stuff. So she blocked the energy and I slept fine. Did she do the sage rub? What do they call that? No, she said, get out. (laughs) Well, that'll work. (laughs) out. Like she just (laughs) shouted at the hallway. Okay, so in theory, <laughs> from the devil's advocate point of view, <laughs> one um, ring to rule them all. <laughs> you and your mom lived in a drafty house, <laughs> <laughs> and your mom made you sleep upstairs so that the draft would go away. No, but no. But what no. tripped me out is okay. that the previous two nights is that I felt like someone was down there, 
like in the corner wouldn't come out did you I have had, a little brother because i could see little brother like messing with you no but i did that's the I kind of thing i would do to boyfriend. my brother i had a boyfriend that passed away so i was wondering like is that the case or You're it like, didn't feel like it so mm. but it felt like somebody in the room i'm like oh, i'm cool dun, dun, dun. but then i watch all the, a lot of those shows so i can do you watch it. ghost hunter that's kind of lame. Like I, I was into uh, what's that one? Wait, 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 okay. Ghost Hunter is lame, <laughs> but mom telling you to sleep up no, in her room for just me out <laughs> because I had the experience beforehand and I didn't say anything to her and she for her to pick that up was creepy. Ghost Hunters are like, go, let's go into a dark room, turn off the lights. Like, oh god, do you see that? Oh god, did you feel that? That is all Ghost Hunter. Did you is. feel that? Oh my god, dude, it's it's I'm like it's out. like sixteen guys with right. infrared <laughs> lights going. What was that? Do you hear that? <laughs> right. Do you hear that? Do you see that? Do you see that? Do you hear that? Do you see that? You... And and no one ever sees or hears anything. Yeah. It's always just a bunch of guys going, dude, dude, what's that? Dude, dude, dude play it back. Play the video dude, back. Okay. Watch that. Do you see that? Listen to that. Did you There's see? There's nothing. <laughs> it's like the wind. It's like, did you hear this? It get out. It is worse than like the Mary Todd Lincoln crazy pictures. <laughs> what are the crazy <laughs> pictures? Is that something you saw? You've seen? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mary Todd Lincoln. When when um, President Lincoln died, Mary. Mary Todd Lincoln went like cuckoo cuckoo and she went to like every psychic she could get her hands on and 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 it got to a point where everybody thought that she um that she was an easy target so pretty much any charlatan on the planet could get her to come in and pay them to pretend to talk to President Lincoln after he passed on and one of her favorite things was to go and have ghost photos taken so that you they would take these pictures and they that would was do common some at the time I think yeah. yeah they would do some trick with the photography that made it look like there was a ghost next to you <laughs> and that is ghost hunters in a nutshell <laughs> right except with video <laughs> with, except with video and a bunch dude, of dudes with that? flashlights dude shut uh, up dude yeah, you really. know what I would be freaking shh, out dude, too shh, shh, shh. that's ghost hunters <laughs> shushing each other <laughs> <laughs> shushing each other and that's like a the whole, whole thing. Episode of that shushing each other. Drives yeah, while insane. they're sitting in an old prison. Okay, do you have any comedy material on ghosts? Because I'm starting to think it's really funny. No, I don't. I, I think we're gonna have to write I like a I ghost it, joke. I think I take it so seriously. <laughs> I'm like, this isn't funny, dude. Seriously. Seriously. <laughs> seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I would I I would like you to do a ghost hunter joke this week if you get a chance. <laughs> Hi Jody. Jody's like turn your phone off I can hear it. Really? Yeah. Oh, thank you Jody. <laughs> thank you for pointing out that little social faux pas. Cuz when you're on the radio it's like so being rude. in the movie theater. Jody has bananas. <sighs> Jody and Heather are bananas. <sighs> Thank you, Jody, and thank you, Heather, and uh, <laughs> and thank you, Chris, for coming in here because I think you probably have to skate now, right? Yeah, you're like, go oh, you're gonna do something. I'm doing a late night show. Are you right now? There's like an open mic. Yeah, where's that? Plug like it. Chemos, chemos. Oh yeah, over on, on Polk. Street? Yeah, sweet. Up in the attic because I hear there's ghosts. Yeah, I'm Metallica know, played there. Saying, but you know, I'm gonna take your advice and do some material on ghosts. This is. I used to run a goth club in there. Really? Yeah, you could com- you can throw that into your ghost jokes. <laughs> I know somebody who used to run a goth club. There here. used to be a goth club here, and one of the kids like died, and now like every was that? I mean, was that late at night? Really, at a goth, goth late club? At, yeah, because late at night, if you turn off all the lights, but but use like that one infrared light, you can sometimes see him in the corner cutting himself. <laughs> <laughs> Shh, dude, dude, do you see that? Do you see it? Chris Burns with Sarah Colonna all this week, uh, Thursday through Saturday at the Punchline in San Francisco. Tickets on sale now at LiveNation.com.